Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening to those of you who are settling into the evening hour. I wanted to welcome you to the Elite Marketing Webinar Series sponsored by Kayon Interactive, titled How to Communicate Complex Value in a Digital First World, Accelerating Sales Engagements by Three Times. How's everyone doing today? Great. Fabulous. Okay, before we get started, um, we have a lot of people register for today's event, so I'm going to let them kind of stream in and get settled in. But before we get started, I wanted to kind of quickly direct your attention to the toolbar found at the bottom of your screen. We're using QA as a great place for you guys to kind of log your questions, um, anything you have for the speakers or presenters throughout today's webinar. We will address probably some of them throughout the presentation because we want this to be engaging and interactive. Um, and then we definitely, certainly at the end, have some time slated for Q&A at the very end as well for additional questions that kind of come through. So feel free to plug your Q&A questions in there um, throughout the course of the webinar, and we'll make sure we address them one by one. So now with all of that out of the way, I wanted to introduce you to our amazing presenters today, um, Sean Riley, Stephen Feinstein, and Gavin Smith. So um, let me start with Sean. Sean is the Senior Director of Vertical Sales in North America at Fortinet. He's a seasoned sales executive um, and leader with extensive experience in technology sales and sales management. He's worked previously with companies such as Dell EMC, InfoSight, and Array Networks. Sean's very focused on driving business growth and increased market presence within the highly competitive IT industry. Um, he has real good expertise in developing solutions that educate sales teams and partners on how to kind of communicate their value in this very complex technical product and service area that he's in. So Sean, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, next, let me introduce you to Stephen Feinstein, who serves as manager of customer engagement at Analog Devices. Stephen's focus is really on implementing a world-class sales enablement um, within his organization that equips sales teams to achieve both challenging corporate as well as individual objectives for sellers. He's previously, previously worked at companies such as RSA Security, SolvePoint, and Progress Software to help them in developing really op operational paths, product instructions, sales training. He helps with creative services and programs as well, all that really help with uh, results and maximize sales effectiveness and efficiency. So uh, Stephen, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Dana. Yeah, and thank you. And with um, more than 25 years of success in building growth-oriented marketing and technology companies, Gavin Finn is currently the president and CEO of KN Interactive, the leader in interactive digital marketing applications for the enterprise. Under his leadership, the company's helped um, B2B organizations such as Cisco, IBM, Ortho Clinical Diagnostics, Beck and Dickinson, Bruker, Siemens, HPE, Hologic, and others really increase sales productivity reduce marketing costs and amplify customer engagement. Gavin holds both a PhD and an MS from MIT, and he teaches entrepreneurial marketing at Tufts University. Gavin, welcome. Thank you, Dana. It's great to be here with everyone. Thank you. All, all three of our speakers today offer really brilliant industry and vertical knowledge that span many arenas, providing a very excellent foundation for today's environment. So at this time, I'd like to turn things over to Gavin to kick off today's live event. Gavin, thank you. Thank you everybody for being here and thank you Dana for arranging and organizing this event for us. Our goal today is to share our experiences and to talk about what we've learned certainly over the last 18 months about how to elevate customer engagement. And we're gonna learn from two of the industry's most seasoned experts, uh, Sean and Stephen, and their experience in how digital transformation has really impacted both sales and marketing and how this is leading us down the path for the future. So as we start, there's actually a couple of many different forces at play, but one of them really has to do with the buyer's demands, the buyer's needs for digital customer engagement. And more and more we see that even in complex B2B solutions and buying ecosystems, um, the individuals who are making these buying decisions and the influencers have a strong preference for more and more digital engagement. That is to say that the coronavirus pandemic has created a situation where a lot of people were engaging digitally and they found that there was a tremendous amount of value in that channel for digital engagement, even through a large part of the sales cycle. That's something that we see continuing well beyond 
the transition from the lockdown states of the COVID pandemic. The other thing that I think is very important for us to recognize is that one of the major global ecosystem forces that we're seeing is complexity is driving longer sales cycles and more difficulty in helping customers understand our differentiated value. So the more complex the sale, the more challenging it is for us to create this common understanding of consistency in how customers perceive our differentiated value to help them solve their problems. When you combine these two things, complexity, difficulty with creating differentiated value understanding and a need for more digital engagement, that's where we see this experience with Fortinet and analog devices becoming so important for us to understand and to share. So we're very privileged here today to have um, these seasoned executives giving us their experience and leading a path for us on how we can take many of these forces, this digital engagement demand and how to deal with complexity and turn that into an, an opportunity for us to be even more successful. So I'm gonna turn things over to Stephen to get started. And Stephen's gonna tell us a little bit about their journey and his personal involvement in how to create these kinds of initiatives. And he's actually gonna walk us through the examples uh, that he's been able to deliver to his company and to his customers as well. Welcome, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Gavin. Thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to speak here today. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Stephen Feinstein with Analog Devices. I I'll tell you, it has been quite a journey. It's been a, a, a crazy uh, year and a half, as we all know. And I, I, one thing I kind of remember is that I think it was uh, March 12th, the 13th of, of 2020, my last day inside uh, the building uh, before we, we all kind of started working from home. As I was walking out of the building, I ended up having a meeting with our video uh, guy, the guy who creates a lot of our corporate videos. And I said, you know, you are about to be, very, be a very important person. You're going to need more people and more help because uh, the currency of choice is about to be video. And it's not just uh, video on demand or video streaming, but it's all this, this virtual space that we're going to be in is going to be so important over the next year and a half. And you know, lo and behold, here we are, and everyone's been spending so much time uh, attending and, and going down the path of, of more virtual and uh, online experiences. Well, analog devices, I mean, we produce thousands of integrated components and SKUs that span multiple markets and geographies. And the real challenge is showcasing them in a way that our customers and our prospects can really and easily understand how they fit into products that they wanna create and we need to transform ourselves from uh, this market perception of just products, right? We're not just a product-oriented company, but we're more of a solution-oriented company. And having it the way a way to do some digital storytelling is the, definitely the right thing to do. And that's why we ended up going and pursuing with Kon. At the time, uh, we were getting ready for CES 2020. CES is the big consumer electronics show. It's more than just consumer electronics. It's also automotive. Uh, it's also a big piece of it. And we had to do what I call pivot. I think everyone was calling it pivot at the time and pivot to a more virtual uh, environment and a more virtual uh, space. And we needed a platform to help meet that challenge. We were doing a couple of things. One, we knew we wanted to have an, an online event and have an, a place for people to come to. But more importantly, we wanted a way for uh, our customers and our prospects to look at our products and our, and our solutions and see how they could uh, work together and see things on their own. So working with Kon, uh, they helped us create a 3D application that you see the, the homepage for uh, right here on the screen. You'll see that in a moment. I'll get into it. But it made it really easy for ADI to tell our story, and it allows others to explore on their own. It's sort of a self-discovery in, in an area that, uh, that works for them. And then especially, we were able to take this whole thing that you're about to see and place it into an online virtual event. And then on, on the event space, when we were running that, we had uh, our attendees could interact with our experts live. So we spent some time looking at all the different uh, pieces that Kon created, and then they could then come back to the virtual event piece and then ask questions and again interact with our, our experts uh, on the platform. So there's definitely a lot of power here. 
Um, and uh, and there, there are many different layers uh, of this whole thing. Um, we're, we're transitioning to storytelling, not just products. Because of the pandemic, it makes it impossible to travel. So now people have to people can explore on their own and they have, and they're finding the areas that are very interesting to them. And oh, by the way, it looks very cool. So let's go ahead and, and uh, I'm gonna share my screen and I'll, I'll show you kind of where we are here. Hold on one second. So I go to share screen. Oh, and I'm actually right at the, I'm gonna go back to the, back to home here. So here we are with our, our screen. Welcome to the application, the K-On application for analog devices. Our, it's our intelligent home application. Uh, there's a lot of movement, a lot of things that are happening on screen. One of the things that we were uh, we wanted, we wanted to make sure it happened is that as everyone was these days going on to an online environment, we wanted to make sure that it was more than just a click here to watch a video. You're not going just to a web page to watch videos. We wanted to make it more inviting, more interactive, more uh, interesting, if you will. We wanted to stand out. And that's exactly what Kon was able to deliver with this application. And the application is such that, um, as I said, we both have automotive uh, areas as well as uh, consumer areas. Automotive has its own space in the garage and everything else is the consumer space. I'm gonna start off in the garage into automotive. And if I click into the automotive, again, the animation comes into play. And this is all running uh, over the web, as you can see, and I can share it uh, easily over the web. And we took this whole thing and put it directly into that environment, as I was saying. So uh, what we were trying to do from the automotive space, we were concentrating on three different areas, e-mobility, autonomous mobility, and cabin electronics. And uh, what we were able to do is you can click on any one of these areas in multiple different ways. I'm going to click on it this way. Uh, you can find out there's LED, powertrain, battery management. And besides, and on the right-hand side, it, it shows you uh, more information about what e-mobility is for ADI. But again, if you remember, rather than just showing products, rather than just showing that we have a wireless battery management system, or we have LEDs, or we have uh, a super radar, or whatever it happens to be, uh, and we have chips that do this, we want to present it in a way that shows where they exist in the car, where they're in the automotive, uh, in the automobile, where they fit in, how they work. And so in this case, I'm gonna click on battery management, exploding view, there's, we have pack monitors, transceivers, battery management software, this wireless, the wireless battery management architecture, and each one of these areas, when you click into them, we have solutions, benefits, and resources. So the solution tells you kind of everything that's happening here, uh, give you the benefits. And then if you want more information with the resources, you could play a video or you can go links directly to our website. Um, and then you, again, exploring your own another area. Let's go back to cabin electronics and kind of go into um, auto, audio and acoustic systems. It brings you right into the car now, this is, I can't think of a cooler way, except I'd love to have this car myself. Uh, this is, this is kind of neat. And the K-On uh, designer is actually able to give me the, my nice uh, purple in-car colors. And if I, if we probably spent more time, we could change the colors as well, which is nice. But again, the same type of thing is I click on any particular area, the solutions, the benefits, and then the available resources uh, to, to follow on. Um, and then the last thing I'll show you, I'm going to go back to the home, go back to home here. And so that was the automotive space. And now we're coming back into the consumer side of things for pure consumer electronics. We have areas and solutions that affect the office, uh, something called an ADI stitch garment for smart, smart clothing, uh, areas in the bedroom and also the living room. I'm going to click in the living room. And uh, we have these areas on the bottom, kind of almost like filters. Anything that was, has to do with infotainment, if I click on that, it will show me just the ones for infotainment. Or a pure consumer can click and brings all the consumer ones in. And then if I want to see, uh, you know, time of flight of people tracking, you know, within, you know, maybe here within the house, uh, make sure that uh, this could be some technology that's used uh, moving forward to make, if you have a, folks uh, that are uh, more elderly and you want to make sure they haven't fallen down if they're not wearing their digital uh, band that uh, shows that there's an issue. There's one way of doing it where we can keep track of uh, some folks. Again, technologies that other people could use in different ways. But it gives people the opportunity, the, the areas to be able to explore this in a very cool, interesting way. 
And uh, that's one of the things I really liked about how we brought this all together uh, with Kayon. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I think my last slide here is um, just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, where, where we are, you know, um, you know, one of the things about this application, and the application has been running since uh, January, um, and that the insight that we get from uh, from Kon, and I will say another benefit of Kon is not just creating a really cool environment to work on, but it's they help us and work with us to provide insights and uh, into the analytics that are captured. And uh, we found out that, for example, that uh, 63 percent, 63 countries uh, were. Our folks from 60 countries were using our application. Over 37% of those uh, had interactions that were three plus minutes long. Um, and that means if they're spending that much time on the uh, application, then we're taking this high level awareness pieces that we've been working on and pushing people down further into the sales funnel. And now they're having buying discussions and that are in depth with our sellers, which is definitely the place we want to be, right? So the next steps are now for what we're doing is we're, the application is still up and running. We've used it by itself for CES. We've used it for other online shows uh, that we've been doing. Uh, but because the, all the due to the dramatic shifts and the B2B buyers and the behaviors and the transformation of this customer experience, it is definitely a hybrid customer journey. And so we have a CES exhibit that's been built. It's been used for other areas. We see ways, and I see ways that we can start using this for a global digital briefing center. It can be used by our sales organization. It can be used uh, by, by customers by themselves. We could share out to them that they could start exploring uh, more about our solutions before they even uh, come into uh, our areas or meet with our, custom, our sales teams. Uh, so they can get uh, be a more uh, informed consumer. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, tell you what we had and share our experiences. And, and Gavin, I'm going to bring it back to you. Thanks very much, Stephen. Very exciting application. And one of the things that I thought I would just ask you about is that there's been this transition to uh, digital in terms of display. But what you were able to accomplish here was a little bit different in the sense that you got the customers to actually drive the experience. So it wasn't a presentation. It was actually customer engagement and customer experience. And as you talked about, there's some numbers about how long they spend with it and all of that. But, you know, can you explain a little bit about sort of your thinking behind transferring the control from the salesperson or the marketing person to the customer? And, you know, what was driving that and what's your experience been in getting customers to actually navigate, and as you did, you know, nonlinear navigation go anywhere whenever they want. You know, right. how has that transition been for you and for your teams? I'd say it's worked out very well um, by by presenting so many different options. It, it and uh, you know, one of the things that's that's tough with analog devices, for example, um, is that you know we're across many different markets, many different areas, and so we have. Uh, a way with with this application to present us uh, our solutions and our story with some cohesiveness, kind of like putting it all kind of, in this case in a house, but it, it also incorporates the automotive side or the consumer side or within the consumer side the different pieces. Uh, but what it allowed what allows our prospects or customers to do is to dive in a little bit deeper, get more uh, uh, get more information on their own. So when we, we finally do have the conversation with us, we don't spend the time uh, just giving them the intro to the technology or to our solution, and then spend the, the, the remainder of the meeting deciding uh, when the next follow-up meeting should be. We have that follow-up meeting initially, right? It's good to have the, the, the follow-up meeting first, if you will, because they're an informed consumer at that point. And so that's what we have found. And I think it's gonna get even better as we uh, present these applications uh, to more of our uh, sales, uh, our sellers. And, and, and the other thing too, is that with the sellers, it, what, you're able to, what we're able to do is we have this link and I think we can push the same link out if it hasn't been uh, pushed out already, everyone in the audience could interact with it on their own. But what's really nice is that during a Zoom call, even though you, you have a meeting virtually like this with, with a prospect, uh, you can send the link to, to them and they can drive the meeting. They can drive 
the discussion based on what they're interested in. And uh, it's not just having them watching a PowerPoint or watching our demo, watching our video. We'll let them be more interactive and have a, a more active role in the, uh, the, the discussions during the meetings. Yeah, that's incredible. And I think, you know, one of the things that's really powerful about this is because uh, Analog Devices is such a, a well-known company for its technology, this has a way of also bringing to life sort of the end user experience because your technologies are embedded in your customers' solutions. This mm -hmm. actually helps to show what value that brings to their customers as well. And so that's another layer of sort of your corporate value is helping them understand how your company is actually delivering value to their customers and therefore helping them differentiate themselves also. So that's quite a, a powerful layered message there all done through this visual interactive experience. So uh, congratulations and, and what a great inspiration. Great, Th thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. And talk about inspiration. We're here to uh, actually learn a lot from Sean, Sean Riley, who's been uh, inspirational, not only to his own team, but to his customers as well. And, and I think you'll see as we, we hear from Sean, his vision of bringing to life customer engagement from the perspective of how sales teams can really transform their relationships with their customers and use those forces of demand for digital to really drive better ultimate outcomes for the customers. And, and that uh, then translates into better outcomes for him and his team as well. So, Sean. Absolutely. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Appreciate it. Uh, it's a tough act to follow there with Steve. So uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you big time. So yeah, so I'm Sean Riley. I manage our uh, North American business from a, a vertical standpoint. And um, if you don't know Fortinet, we're um, you know probably the second largest uh, cybersecurity company in the world today. There's a couple of companies that we're uh, chomping at their heels, but uh, growing very fast. If you tuned in last weekend, we um, uh, sponsored the, the PGA uh, Championship out in Napa. It was awesome. You can see my flag there. The girls that are on here, they wanted me to change my background, make it look like that. Um, uh, my, my mother, you know, always told me I have two mouths and two ears. So I'm going to try to, you know, try to, you know, shorten my uh, my stint here. Um, so what, what have we been doing? So Fortinet uh, is growing fast, you know, tripled our sales staff in the last uh, three years. Um, had, um, you know, lots of new people join the organization. We needed to figure out a way to you know, bring the cool factor. We needed to figure out a way to uh, get to our um, sales teams and marketing teams faster. Um, you know, at the, I think Gavin was one yesterday in a pre-call talking about how the, the, the change is just, you know, we're rapidly changing you know, our, our techniques, uh, our, 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 our sales approach, you know, our static content needs to be changed you know, almost on a you know, quarterly basis now, not only, you know, especially from, you know, you know, PDFs and cut sheets and whatnot, we need to figure out a way to kind of improve that and kind of manage that, that challenge, right? Um, we wanted to bring some consistency to the table, right? Um, and and giving, giving our sales teams, which are more generalist in nature, right? And I'm not saying generalist in a, in a negative term, but, you know, the, the massive amount of people that we hired uh, or all, you know, very seasoned salespeople and marketing people, but do not have that, you know, vertical expertise, so to speak, you know, wh whether it be retail or healthcare or government or oil and gas, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or financial for that matter. Um, and, and one thing that's really important and it was said before was this concept of, um, you know, being relevant with your customer when you're not there in an indirect way. Steve said it in a different way. Uh, where the customer can actually almost sell themselves, where they have that ability to drive through the application, drive through the actual use cases, and drive through the reasons why they will invest in Fortinet solutions or analog devices solutions without us being there, right? That was something that we really wanted to grasp and give the, the, the teams on the ground that ability to get educated uh, to train themselves, not only train themselves, but also train the customer into understanding, you know, what it is that Fortinet can provide. So I'm going to share my screen and show you guys what we built. 
So I think you guys can see my screen, a little nod quick. Awesome. And uh, so we call this the Fortinet digital experience, uh, digital security everywhere you need it. You need to plug that, you know, per my CMO. And as you can see on the screen, we have several vertical markets. Um, uh, retail is probably, retail and government are probably the largest ones inside Fortinet today. I'm only going to go through a few of these, but if you take a look at oil and gas, do a little click, um, does a little bit of a load here. And one of the things that we were trying to accomplish with this is um, we have a, a vertical here called operational technology, which is more industrial in nature. And it's not really a vertical, it's kind of like a horizontal. So it covers manufacturing, oil and gas, utilities, et cetera, et cetera. This was probably one of the toughest ones for us to educate our customers and our internal staff on what our solution sets are. So if you could see some of these things here, and if you're not familiar with the oil and gas market, there's all sorts of different cycles and pieces of the puzzle that actually create gasoline or oil for your, for your uh, burner or oil for your car. So you see securing downstream production, securing midstream, securing upstream exploration on the bottom there with one of the oil rigs where it pre pretty much starts, right? But one of the feedbacks that we got from customers, because this was the first vertical that we deployed, with uh, the Kon folks in our Fortinet digital experience, the feedback we got was, wow, you guys really understand our business, right? You know why we will be investing in some type of technology to either connect, secure, or, or manage you know, an environment like this, right? You know, if we take a quick look over at the healthcare, for instance, right? There's a little load here. It's pretty fast, by the way. Um, you'll see you have different aspects of a healthcare environment. Uh, this is more of a hospital type like environment as well as doctor offices. But if we take a quick look into the medical campus and do a little hover here, you'll see we actually have an actual patient room. So when, when and if a customer is sitting in front of one of our folks or the customer was sent this link, which I think the link's being pushed out to you all, you know, either now or at some point or another, um, they click into this and they almost feel like they're inside their own environment. Okay. It's cool. It's different. They get to understand and feel how that emotional connection to the screen and to what we're actually trying to accomplish here. When you do a little hover over a bunch of these different things, and I'm going to dive into this in a second. You see the different pieces of the puzzle of our technology that can actually help in different areas. Right. I'm going to go back. We're going to just go right over to the retail side. And then I'm gonna dive in a little bit and show you some really cool stuff that we did. So again, retail, one of the largest um, uh, verticals inside of Fortinet. Um, this is one of the last ones we actually uh, built because um, it is actually the uh, most mature vertical uh, inside of Fortinet. But what I wanna do is actually dive into a quick service restaurant and show you what we built very similar to the patient room concept, um, but this really gives somebody, and, 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 and I didn't really mention this, but you know, back in March, 2020, when COVID hit, I didn't even know if we were gonna have a retail vertical. <laughs> I, I was really worried, um, didn't know where we were gonna go. But in fact, um, all the COVID-19 did was force organizations to digitally transform themselves and to get better at what they do. So the ones that were, were suffering were, were, were taking their business and streamlining it and cutting as much cost as they could to get better at what they did. The ones that were flourishing were trying to leapfrog competition. And the ones that flourished were fast food, quick service restaurant, fast food, fast casual. Um, and these organizations really needed to understand, um, you know, what improvements do they need to make inside their organization? So there's a couple of ways to utilize this tool, right? You can do little hovers over the different areas that'll show you points of the business, okay? Inside the business equipment cabinet, you have your area over here for drinks, you have your point of sale systems, which are obviously the first uh, position that you're interacting with a customer. You have your digital signage and your menu boards. What I like to do is use the, 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 um, the view over here. So this gives you that quick service restaurant ideology of exactly what's cooking inside a restaurant. 
a lot of the things that they're important, that's important to them. And again, this is feedback. We didn't just create this. Um, a lot around uh, customer experience, um, the significant hurdles due to the complexity and time, time to market, uh, changing their digital signage, things like that, right? So if you do a little quick click, it brings you to a different area of the restaurant, right? And now, again, creates that emotional connection between the person looking at this, let's hopefully it's a decision maker or at least someone that has some influencing power in the organization is like, yeah, you know, we have access points that we have deployed in our organization, right? But what's different about these things, right? Well, you can click, you know, you learn more here. And it gives you that ability to take a 3D view of exactly what's cooking. You know, why is, you know, why would I use this? Gives you some tech specs here on the side about what our wireless, um, you know, solution set will provide, right? If you wanted some more information, you can actually click here. Click this little button here, it brings you up to the actual data sheet, which I think, actually, you know what, I'm not sharing that, but it brings you up to that data sheet, okay? Um, you can actually hit this button here or here, and it will save it down here to give you the ability to either email it to you at some other time, or maybe email it to one of your colleagues, right, that might really need another look at what's cooking around Fortinet's wireless access point. You do another click, everyone's probably gone into, um, you know, quick service restaurants, there's lots of cameras today. It's actually doing a lot of facial recognition. It's doing, um, you know, counting how many people come in and out of the organization. It's obviously there from a security standpoint to keep the employees safe, as well as keep the uh, uh, patrons safe. But again, you can click here, you know, find out some more information on what's cooking there. Uh, I don't know if you've gone into Taco Bell recently, uh, but they have spent quite a bit of time and invested quite a bit of money in their self-service kiosks. So this gives you the ability to hover over, well, what does Fortinet provide that can help me either deploy, secure, or manage from a Fortinet standpoint, um, these kiosks? And then it gives you this ability here where you can click these if you hovered here. Uh, you can also click and say, okay, what is this FortiGate? You know, what is this you know, device? Gives you that opportunity to click learn more. Gives you again a 3D view of exactly what this product does. By the way, this is our firewall solution set. It'll keep you safe from the internet, keep hackers out, you know, block certain websites, things like that. Gives you that content. You can also, you know, click the contact us button, which will take you right to the uh, Fortinet. Uh, uh, I'm going to do it today because then I have to go through, uh, you know, a bunch of fields to fill out. Uh, but it'll give you the ability to connect it right to your um, uh, either your help desk or connect it to a, a full chat, you know, to give, uh, you know, customers the ability to or prospects the ability to uh, communicate with you directly, especially if they like what they see uh, based on on the internet there. Right. And, you know, one of the things that that has really intrigued um, our customers and our prospects as as well as our internal staff is this pulls us away from, I'm not saying we're gonna get away from PowerPoint and PowerPoint presentations, but it pulls us away from the, the norm. Um, again, I, I don't think PowerPoint's gonna go away, but you know, we're actually in the process of um, embedding this into our new hire training, okay? And into our formal training um, you know, concepts, right? So that, our new people can actually visualize um, what exactly, you know, these environments look like, especially since a lot of our salespeople are, are, are generalists and marketing people are generalists in nature, right? And that's the, the, the quick overview on the Fortinet digital experience. I'm gonna stop sharing because I have a couple of slides that I wanna close out on. So as I was mentioning before, this is kind of just kind of a recap, you know, we use this Fortinet digital experience that's built by Kaon in a lot of different, you know, um, use cases, right? In inside meetings, you can actually take this app with you, uh, especially if maybe there's areas where, and, and government's gonna use this a lot, you can't have internet access in certain areas of a cleared environments, you can bring your machine that's obviously cleared and, and actually show a government agency um, on an actual app that you download to your machine. Um, we, we hosted this at the Fortinet Championship that I mentioned in our PGA. Uh, we have this all over social media. 
Um, I have uh, pretty much all my teams uh, need to have the Kon interactive industry demo inside their um, their email signature so that as it goes out um, to whomever, they have the ability to, to to connect and use that. And then we're also implementing this into most of our trade shows. It, you know not all of our trade shows do we have a video monitor, but mo most of them do. And um, if we have that, uh, we're utilizing the, the trade show monitor, um, you know, you know, quite considerably actually, and even have, 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 are thinking about as we move forward, using some touchscreen, you know, uh, you know, creating even more of a cool factor with some large touchscreen coming up soon. Let me go to the next slide quick. And I just wanted to kind of show you what some of the initial feedback, again, we've been building this for about six months, so it is fairly newer. Um, but some of our folks are just super excited about what we've built and how it's helping them interact with their customers and tell the story. The most notable on here is this Fortinet field CISO. He did 35 years at the NSA and is our OT, uh, our operational technology uh, CISO, our chief information security officer. He had a really excellent uh, a quote here, okay, on application affords more of an independent personal inspection of Fortinet's offerings. And that actually goes into that whole emotional connection. When you connect and click on this video um, experience, and that's why we call it the Fortinet digital experience. It's just a different way and it brings that cool factor into the mix. Well, that's pretty much what I have today. I appreciate everybody's time. And uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for Kayon for helping us build this. And I appreciate uh, everybody's time today. Thanks so much, Sean. It's very inspirational you it. what you've been able to accomplish. Thank you. you. Know, the interesting thing I think here is that you've used this digital environment to help transform from selling to understanding your customers' environments, understanding your customers' problems, and taking your entire sales organization and turning them into problem solvers and consultants as opposed to product sellers. And it's very challenging to do that without some consistent way of having this conversation. And one of the things that you mentioned was that the customers are saying, you understand our business. I mean, it's very hard to get that point across when you're not face-to-face -face with the customer. So having that ability to use a digital platform as a way of transforming the go-to-market strategy, that's truly the difference between digitization and digital transformation, right? Where you're actually right. taking a new process. And I think for you, um, you know, my question to you regarding this is, you know, you've, you're responsible for all of these verticals and we've been building these verticals out for you over time. Is this a strategy that you see being um, sort of transformative for your sales team? Uh, how, how do you see your sales organization transforming as a consequence of this, you know, customer centric view of the, um, of the go to market yeah. strategy? Yeah, good question. So um, a quick, quick um, history. So Fortinet, inside Fortinet, you have two different main verticals, uh, not main verticals, but two different verticals that have their own teams, which is finance and, 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 and government. The rest of the, the verticals are not segregated that way. So that's where our teams come into play because most of those salespeople are generalists, right? And having the ability to, again, like I said, get to these generalists fast, explain to them that this is a different way of selling, bring them the tools to the table to offer them the ability. Because one, one, one rep might have five of these verticals and they can't, there's no way they can be experts in every single one of the verticals, right? So they have to have that capability of telling the story and getting closer. And again, you know, earning the trust from the customer that, hey, you know, you guys do know our business and, and, and care about how we consume technology. And that really helps uh, the success ratio of the reps on the ground, for sure. It's, it's really interesting. And this is a lesson that we've seen across a lot of different industries that you're sort of exemplifying this and really pioneering the success and the outcomes here is that the transformation is not just in Sort of the way you go to market but how customers perceive you because when you're in a digital environment you build trust differently from the way that if you're face to face and going out to dinner and having that 
very in-person connection. And the way you build trust in a digital environment is you become credible to the customer. You, they see you as a valued resource. And so this digital platform is really playing a big role in building that trust because this is the way of the future. Yes, we're gonna have face-to-face -face meetings and face-to-face -face events, but not exclusively the way we used to. It's really going to be this combined hybrid environment and creating, as you said, a consistent way of articulating your customer-centric value story, I think is important no matter what the venue is, right? And uh, really? so you've really done an amazing job of pioneering this and, and Steven's mm -hmm. team as well. So just to, to sort of wrap things up, what I'd like to sort of do is raise the level of abstraction. Everything that Steven and, and Sean have been able to accomplish is based on the availability of a platform as opposed to different point solutions. If you look at what Sean's solution looks like, there are multiple verticals represented, represented in this solution and they were built over a period of time. So it started, as he said, with one or two, the oil and gas environment, and then it moved out into a variety of other verticals. And the availability of this platform enabled his team to experience a relevant but also expanding suite of vertical solutions to talk about all within one environment so one benefit of having a platform is it's extensible without having to rebuild everything every time the other benefit of a platform is that it can be used in these multiple environments you just saw for example trade shows face-to-face -face, digital touch screens um, on the web you all experience this yourselves on the web on local devices as sean was saying it it can run online and offline and that's because it's available on a local device as an installed app all of that happens because it's a platform and not a, a point solution one of the things Stephen mentioned was the ability to gain insights as to what's happening where in the world are your users how are they traversing this application what areas of interest do they have with respect to our solutions all of those insights are available because it's a platform and because of that platform all of these benefits accrue in a highly cost-effective and reusable way so that this becomes a sort of a go-to-market strategy across different touch points, not just for one purpose. We heard about training, training the sales team, training new hires, and also ultimately it's training of the customers in thinking about how these uh, various solutions affect them. One of the interesting things about the retail example, and it's true of all of them that Sean was showing is, when customers experience this application themselves, they're traversing this, they see something that looks exactly like or very close to their, uh, their store, they recognize that, oh, we've got cameras, we've got these kiosks, we need to be thinking about security, they may not have been thinking about security. And so what's happening with the Fortinet solution is it's actually educating the customer as to their own challenges, even if they weren't aware of them beforehand, just by virtue of this. There's some science behind that, it has to do with giving the customer control and giving them an engaging environment so they have multi-sensory uh, engagement, giving them relevant information. And you heard Stephen and Sean talk about what they call these cool environments. It's an emotional connection. Buyers need to be able to connect with you emotionally. And using these digital platforms, it can be a very static environment if all you're doing is presenting them or if all they're doing is looking at a video or a web page, but when they're actually engaged and there's these great visual interactions that look like their environments, that's where that emotional connection comes in. And that stimulates a greater number of synaptic connections in the brain, meaning that people will actually remember it and they'll connect to your solution better. So there's this tremendous value in having a, a strategy of digital transformation and then the ability to actually deliver on that strategy through these very customer centric experiences. So congratulations to Sean and Stephen for making these kinds of breakthroughs. I think everybody here can really learn a lot about um, where they can go with respect to the experience that you've had. And uh, we're delighted to take questions. I know that there's been several questions coming in uh, to Dana. So perhaps Dana, you can uh, ask a question and we can, we can ask our panelists to answer them. Of course, thank you so much, Sean. And I appreciate the, the, the um, discussion today. Uh, I did want to just note to everybody, I got a lot of chats that came in regarding the recording of the session. Of course, we will share it with everybody who attended um, following the event. We'll make sure to get a link out to you. 
Um, <clears throat> One of the first questions that came in was actually for Sean regarding your application. It seems extremely comprehensive. Who was involved in developing the story and how many iterations or versions did it take to get to this level of complexity? Sure. So, um, so each one of the uh, vertical teams has a director of marketing and then they report up into uh, one, one, let's call them RVP, right? So the RVP was the one that really, um, gathered all of the requirements from the multiple directors of marketing inside each vertical. So that was that commonality. So we didn't have a whole bunch of people going to K-On and saying, we need this, we need this, we need this, right? So that, that helped. So yes, it, it is definitely comprehensive. Um, there was a lot of iterations, right? So it, it, this is not gonna be something where you're just gonna slap this thing together. And the reason why is you want it to be you want the customers and the, 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 the field and your organization to have that emotional experience. So lots of feedback are, are, are going to be, need to be taken from different groups. Let's call it the field, the marketing people, um, even technical folks, as well as, um, you know, outside, outside customers. Um, but the k folks made it very easy to interact. Um, you know, it, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was more of a partnership than you know, we're paying K-On to do this. It was a partnership to build something awesome. And um, it took some time, but the end result has been amazing. And, and actually it's not ending. So we have, we have meetings all the time about, oh, you know, can it do this or can it do that? Or, or how could we implement our Fortinet security fabric, you know, um, uh, mapping inside here and all sorts of things. So um, it's definitely a, a journey for Thank sure. You. Thank you. Uh, um, the next question that came in was really in regards to maybe Gavin and Sean can answer this collaboratively, but um, how quickly can you get the stories? You mentioned, Sean, you just added retail. How quickly can you get those stories updated? And is any part of this self-serve, whether it's content, collateral, video, anything like that? I'm delighted to, uh, to lead up very quickly. The, uh, there's two aspects of this. The, the pace with which you get these updated really depends on how complex they are but we usually with uh, Stephen and with Sean I think we're doing quarterly updates if I remember correctly so every quarter there's a new solution story there's a new section or a couple sometimes it's two or three at a time um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's a cadence that the sales team know they're going to recognize every quarter every month whatever it is they can get an update and then the other part of this is because there's a platform, there are parts of this application that the Fortinet and the uh, analog devices team update on their own. There are parts that uh, maybe have some more complex 3D interactions that the KON team do, but the um, platform allows the, the marketing team and the subject matter experts to actually update the content themselves. So they can go in and add new collateral or they can change the wording and that, by the way, also includes translations to when you uh, translate the applications into multiple languages. So when you're a global organization and you're selling globally, very often those regions want to have a regionalized version of the application. So some of that can actually also be done in a combination environment. Um, and I don't know if uh, Stephen or Sean, you, you want to add anything to that? I'll just say that uh, it is a, uh, um, an iterative process. Uh, working directly with uh, with Kon and and uh, you know I echo what Sean said it's a partnership you know it's something that you work together with and we found quickly that the Kon team uh, uh, settled in and had uh, there was a certain cadence a number of of uh, meetings that we were having and they quickly became uh, experts, if you will, <laughs> in our own solutions. So they could better, they could also help tell the story and not just, we're not just throwing it over the wall either way. They're not throwing it over the wall to us and, and vice versa. It's something that's being, that's being worked on. Uh, so uh, we have found that uh, by able to do that, yeah, we the diff, we have different rooms that you saw in our consumer space. There are four or five different uh, rooms and multiple technologies. And the automotive space is another business unit completely uh, different. So we would work with every one of the, the different subject matter experts in the different areas. But it turns out with the same uh, K-On team. And, uh, and the K-On team uh, had, was, was, was wonderful and continues to be uh, and help us with, with the updates. And you know, we also have a self-updates. 
a lot of our videos, a lot of the things that we do, we could easily switch out. And um, right now, the way we have it set up is that if there, if you want more information, you click on a video, that's going to a video that's being served up outside of the k uh, environment. And so we can easily switch the link and update the video without worrying about, you know, any time. It's not a lot of time, but any time taken to update it from a k on side. So the things we can do on our own. Thank you. Um, the next question that came in was in regards to, we're trying to elevate the sales relationship from vendor to more of a trusted educator or advisor. How are sales teams trained on using these types of selling solutions? So let me actually just get started from a general point of view, and then maybe Sean can talk a little bit about what he's done with his sales team and Stephen with the, the plans for the future there. We, we've recognized that technology is a part of this solution. It's part of the environment. So we can build these applications and they can be terrific. But until people really understand that model, remember Sean was talking about transforming the entire model. Customers are driving, right? This is all about the customer's environment. It's not just about our products. Stephen was talking about how we're talking about the solution story, not just the technical aspects of the product. So in order to create that transformation, um, we've also recognized that we should be thinking about user adoption and awareness and a constant feedback with that sales team, with the, the group that's going to be responsible for that customer relationship. So we create not just a cadence around the application and the application updates, but also around the user communities, <clears throat> the sales and marketing teams. And we have week, uh, weekly or monthly or quarterly update meetings with all of those groups to get their feedback and to help them, <clears throat> excuse me, understand what the right model is for sharing these applications, for understanding how customers use them, and for getting the feedback in as to what needs to be added, uh, what feedback they're getting from customers, and how we can inform the continued evolution of the applications based on that feedback. So it's a, that's also a continuous process. And what the sales teams in general have told us is they value very much being heard in the process. This is not just something that marketing throws over the wall. It's part of a continued collaboration between sales and marketing so that the sales teams are actually involved in how it gets deployed and how it actually evolves in the future. I don't know, Sean, if you, you want to speak yeah, to sure. how your sales teams are. Yeah, involved. no, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, the way that um, Fortinet has created the vertical market teams um, is also a testament on why this works because the, the marketing there's an element of marketing sales and thought leadership, which would be CISOs inside of each vertical. Okay. And then, you know, since we don't own the business, so to speak, we're actually sitting on top of all of the commercial enterprise and small, medium business sellers. We get to push down, you know, our tools and functionality to them. So what has happened is we did a launch of the, of this product. We got lots of feedback back. And now what we're, we're in the process of doing is, that was like a general launch. And now we're in the process of doing is taking certain segments of the sales teams and marketing teams, and then getting a little bit more intimate with them in the feedback that they provided and how, so for instance, taking most of the people that have healthcare accounts and going in and talking to them about the Kon app, right? Or going into most of the folks that have um, you know, manufacturing accounts and going into them with the Kon app, right? And starting to get even more personalized, um, you know, intimate feedback. So overall, it's been positive, but again, it's an evolving, it's an evolving process for sure. But uh, it's been excellent and, and very positive so far. Thank you. And I have one last question, just in the essence of time, because I know we're wrapping up right now, but this one was actually directed towards Stephen. Um, given you, you showcased your application at CES, were, was there a way that you captured leads, opportunities, analytics around digital communication? And does your platform integrate with anything like Salesforce or HubSpot to capture those? Uh, that's a great question. Um, what we ended up doing is, yes, as I said, we ended up taking this application and embedding it into a larger uh, virtual and uh, event environment that we were using. And uh, that environment that we had is you had to register to go in, so we know who people were when they when they actually came into the environment. When they clicked off and went into and across the threshold into the Kon environment, we start capturing a whole bunch of different analytics within the Kon space, and then working with Kon as well as and, and we know who they are, and then we're able to figure out who they are and who and and 
go back to see who was registered and who that person was registered. So we were able to kind of figure out once they came into the event and they ended up going into K-On, what they did within the K-On experience. And then uh, we were able to capture all those leads, bring them into our space, uh, into our tools. And um, no, we don't, we're not uh, working on uh, with HubSpot or Salesforce or some of the most popular ones, but that doesn't mean we weren't able to work with it. We were able to download all the data uh, working with both uh, K-On uh, as well as the, the, um, the event platform, the virtual event platform, working with both those companies, able to get the data and then import it directly into there and then work on it from there with our own internal analytics department. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, guys. That concludes today's Elite Marketing Webinar Series, How to Communicate Complex Value in Today's Digital First World. Sean, Stephen, and Gavin, it's much appreciated. Thank you for joining us and sharing these kind of critical insights in, in how people are effectively integrating interactive solutions and tools into helping boost sales. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, if anyone has any questions post event, feel free to reach out directly. And of course, again, we'll share a copy of today's recording. So thank you everyone for your time, much appreciated. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so you much. Everyone. All right, bye-bye.